Welcome back. Let's learn storing secrets in AKS from this uh, video. This is going to be uh, maybe two or three videos because first we need to understand uh, a concept a little bit and then there are multiple ways of doing it. So we'll do the lab accordingly and hopefully within two or three videos we would be able to wrap this up. So let's start with uh, understanding the concept storing secrets in Azure Kubernetes service. Well, let's start with this. All production applications require some sensitive information to function, such as connection strings, that uh, passwords, uh, access keys, those kind of stuff, which is sensitive. Uh, and Kubernetes has a pluggable backend to manage these secrets. By default, Kubernetes has something that could help you manage these secrets. I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. I'm just saying Kubernetes provides by default something for the secrets. And Kubernetes also provides multiple ways of using the secrets in your deployment. The ability to manage secrets and use them properly will make your application more secure. I'll repeat it once again. Ability to manage secrets and use them properly will make your application more secure. Because as I said, Kubernetes has the default way. There are other ways as well. There are multiple ways we can create the secrets. There are multiple ways we can use them. And ability to manage it in your app will make all the difference. That's all we're gonna learn in this couple of videos. So stay with me. Let's try to dig it a little deeper. As I was saying, I, I've mentioned a couple of times, Kubernetes has a built-in secret system that stores secrets in a semi-encrypted fashion in the default Kubernetes database. What is the default database of Kubernetes? It's, if you guessed ETCD, you're correct, that's it. This system works well, but isn't the most secure way to deal with the secrets in Kubernetes, as I was saying, because let's, let's compute this thing first, then I'll explain you why. In AKS, you can make use of project or resource, uh, called Azure Key Vault. By utilizing this Key Vault, you can, you can make your secrets more secure as compared to using the default Kubernetes database or default or built-in secret system. Right, well, they are storing in the database, Kubernetes database. So now I'll explain you why it is more like uh, it will store the Kubernetes at set where it is storing. It will store them in base64 encoded format. Base64 is a way to encode data in, an, in a manner which is not a secure way of doing encryption. Anybody with access to base64 encoded data can easily decode it and we'll do the lab on it so that it will make more sense. Well, this is what the Kubernetes does, but we are learning Azure Kubernetes service. So what Azure does here, what AKS has, Azure adds a layer of security on top of this by encrypting all data at rest within the Azure platform. So it makes it more secure. The default secure secret implementation in Kubernetes allows you to store multiple types of secrets. All right, so whenever we, whenever we'll like maybe this video and the next video when we'll perform the lab, you'll see the secret and there would be a type of secret. So right now we are going to talk about multiple types of secrets that could be created or Kubernetes allow us to work with. 
So there are, there are many, the most often used is the opaque secrets or TLS one. There is service account tokens, Docker config secret, basic authentication secret, or uh, what we call it, I'm um, sorry, I forgot, SSH, SSH authentication secret. There, there are multiple types of secrets. For example, I said opaque secret. The, these can contain any user defined secret like key value kind of data. If we talk about Docker config secret, these are used to store Docker registry credentials for Docker command line configuration. SSH will keep the SSH private keys. Uh, secure account tokens, these are used by Kubernetes pods for built-in cluster RBAC. So there are multiple types of secrets. When we will create it, you'll see it, right? So as a user of Kubernetes or as an administrator of Kubernetes, you most typically will work with opaque secret and TLS secret, right? We all know where TLS comes in the picture. We have already completed a couple of labs, including the application gateway. So we know we have to go ahead and work on that. And the OPIC secret, you'll see it in the lab for sure. So there are multiple types of secrets that Kubernetes allow us to create or Kubernetes allow us to work with. Now there is, these are types of secrets. Now there are multiple ways we can create these types of secrets. We can create secrets from files. We can create secrets from YAML or JSON definitions. We can create secret from command line as well. So uh, these are the three ways we can create the type of secrets that we mentioned, right? So Kubernetes gives us two way of consuming the secret. We understood what is secret, what Kubernetes does, those things at the very first. Then we, we understood the types of secret. Then we try to, uh, there are three ways of creating these types of secrets. Now, once we have this secret, how to consume it? There are two ways we can consume these secrets in Kubernetes for our application, of course. The very first way is like an environmental variable. And the other way is mounting secret as a file in a pod. And mounting secret as a file in a pod is the approach that uh, everyone goes with, right? It seems more secure and more uh, reliable. So this is the basic concept of uh, secret. A lot more we'll learn when we'll start working on the lab. So I think we'll start working on the lab in the next video because uh, if you remember, uh, if you have seen the previous video, I just deleted everything. Uh, I have to create the AKS cluster again so that I can go ahead and perform this lab. So let's meet uh, in the next video where I'll try to wrap up all different types of uh, creating three different ways of creating secrets and uh, how to consume these secrets. So till then, take care, bye-bye, keep learning.